was able to pull 439 million people out of poverty. India pulled 269 people out of poverty, and Vietnam did over 50 million. What they did is not rocket science. No, it's not. It's for us to do the same thing. The map has been laid. They invested in the critical areas of development. And that created massive job within that period. So if you know what people do that got them or makes them better, do it. It is not anything. Don't create your own paradigm and think you're going to be different. We will do what other people are doing. That's what we're going to do. And we will put people as quickly as we can out of poverty. Thank you. Our next question is from Chinude Guana, Colombia, uh, SIPA. The question is how do you plan to unify the nation given the increasingly polarized national environment? Every nation, no one, every nation is polarized, I've yeah. said it before. Yeah, they the unifying them is for you to be a leader of all. The tolerance, the understanding, dialogue, talk, show love, everything. You must, because you're a leader. A leader must be able to bring people together. And I can show you that anywhere you can bring unity and everything in Nigeria, always make decisions based on justice, the fair to all, Explain where there's difficulty, try to talk to the people. Don't just think that you can treat people anyhow and allow and expect them to keep quiet. No. All right, the next question is from Kyra Oredu, who is a student here at Columbia University. And she asks, this past summer I interned at the Lakeshore Center, but also had the opportunity to visit Lagos University teaching hospital. And I noticed a huge discrepancy between the private and public institutions with regards to health, health resources, and health resources and policy. How do you plan to address this disparity? Fed 
national level, but at the state and the grassroots level? Well, you know, I've got a lot of work on corruption, and I've said it. You need to deal with the issue of corruption. Corruption kills three things a society needs to try. Corruption kills entrepreneurship. It kills professionalism. Today we have professors in the university. The professors in the university, when I was in the university in Nigeria, were world class. That's why I have people like Chinua Achebe coming here to become a real professor in Brian University. There are so many of them who left. You can't have professors doing research and everything working hard when they earn less money than a local commission. You can't do that. So these are things we need to fix. It gives hard work. Yeah. So I know what to do. I promise the Nigerians that if I have the opportunity, we will deal with this short course. I'm it at the level. What I want people to know is that all these things have done it at the particular level. And the result were clear. I'm only asking for the opportunity to do it for the country. All right, the next one is from Odinaka Izilbili. Please, if you can please stand up. I recognize you. She's in Colombia. Or he or she's with Colombia. Sit up. Can you hear? She, please just give her a round of applause. Thank you very much. And she asks Given Nigeria's debt level, are you considering using debt for climate swaps as a debt restructuring strategy? Consequently, what's your energy transition plan for Nigeria? How will you invest in the power and avoid stranded assets? Thank you. I want you to consult you about this day's <laughs> Well, quite frankly, when it comes to issue of debt, I said that Nigerian debt is not as bad as most countries are. But it is very bad because we borrowed for consumption. There's nothing wrong, anything wrong with borrowing. What is wrong about borrowing is what you borrowed it for. If you borrow for consumption, you're in a mess. If you borrow for production and investment, good. America as a country today owes over 80% of the GDP as debt. Here. In fact, soon it will be 100%. And this is the biggest economy in the world, 23 trillion. Yet their debt is huge. The second biggest economy, China, owes over about 50, 60 percent of their GDP in debt. The third biggest economy, Japan, owes to over 30 percent. Of the debt as the GDP. So 230% of it. So you can see everybody needs all the Western world countries, all the G7 countries, are at least owing over 50% of their GDP. So there's nothing wrong in debt. Same thing for business and everything. But Japan, everybody knows that use their resources to keep its economy going, like America used it to keep its economy going. And Japan today owes the highest amount of U.S. treasuries. So he is going, she is going. If you go to her and say, you're going, you say, okay, here is me, I invested the money, and I can pay you some more. You come to him and say, where is my money?
The total the GDP of Bangladesh was about between 110 115 billion dollars. Their per capita was 747 dollars. Their debt was about 45 billion dollars. So they were going about 36 percent, 38 percent of their GDP as debt. 2010. As at that time, Nigerian GDP was 375 billion naira, and per capita was 2,250 dollars. And our debt was about 30 billion dollars. Cumulative, that's local and foreign debt. Today, Bangladesh GDP is about 330. So they've grown, their GDP has grown three times. Their per capita is now about 2,000 pounds. So it's also moved over three times. Their debt has increased to over 100 billion, but it's lower in terms of percentage because their GDP has increased. So they invested in food. They invested in education. They invested in this. Today, Bangladesh is almost, if not similar, but almost receiving more remittances than Nigeria because they've educated their more people and some of them are They are now a major and biggest exporter of clothing in the world. 36 billion. So they end to work up the from oil from exporting clothing. Now Nigeria, today, our GDP is about 400. Our per capita is now about 1,980, so not about 12% of our per capita, and our debt has increased to about over 100 billion. So that money you borrowed, you dash it to your girlfriend. <laughs> Thank you. 
Right, David Mann. Right. You need to export t-shirts. 